Have you ever had everything planned for a backpacking trip and you were super excited about it? You had your friends planned, the gear you're going to be bringing planned, you had the location perfectly pinned on a map, just for you to get out there and have the trip ruined by a rainstorm that you didn't see coming. I'm not going to lie to you, I know this is very frustrating and very unfortunate. However, I do believe that you can still enjoy your backpacking trip no matter what Mother Nature throws at you. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you a few tips and tricks that I learned along the way through the past years that have helped me still be able to enjoy a trip even if it does rain along the way. So the first thing that I try to do when I'm about to go backpacking is going to kind of seem obvious. I look ahead at the weather forecast. Although, like I said, this seems obvious, don't put it aside just yet. Making sure that you take the time to look at the weekend's weather forecast is going to allow you to be able to predict if you are going to have some rain. Maybe this will decide if you bring a whole rain suit or just maybe a light rain jacket or maybe nothing at all. The simple act of avoiding it in the first place, especially if it's going to be something more severe, is the number one thing you can do to make sure that you enjoy your backpacking trips. Another question that I ask myself is, am I bringing the right gear? Making sure that I'm bringing enough gear, whether that's for the length of my trip or the way that the land is going to be laid out or the weather weather in this case is another huge thing when it comes to making sure that you enjoy your backpacking trip. So when you do look at the weather forecast for that week or for that weekend and you see that it's not going to be anything too serious and you decide you're still going to go, although there is that slight chance of rain, there is some gear that I would recommend that you make sure you have with you. And sure, some of the gear that I'm about to recommend for you might not be the most lightweight options as possible. If you can afford the more lightweight options, obviously go with those. But for the majority of us that just want to be able to enjoy the trip in the first place, most of this gear that I'm about to recommend for you is actually right along the budget lines. So rain jackets, pants, or any clothing at all that's going to help you stay waterproof stay waterproof are an obvious must-have. The rain pants on that list could be optional, once again, depending on how likely that rain is. If I look at the weather forecast and it's going to be a 50-50 chance that it's raining the whole time, I'm definitely bringing some rain pants. So what I have right now is definitely affordable and cheap. I have the Ozark Trail Rain Suit. You can pick this one up for about 20 bucks from any Walmart near you. I'd also really highly recommend Frog Togs. They might be 10 or 20 dollars more, but they are definitely more lightweight and they're made of a softer material. Some pros to this stuff is it's going to keep you dry from head to toe, and it's so big that it actually fits over most puffy jackets. No matter what layers you have underneath it, most frog togs or this Ozark rain suit is going to fit right over top of it. Now something that is a very big downside for frog togs or this Ozark trail is how cheap and rip prone they are. If you aren't careful, anything along the trail will rip them, from a branch to a thorn to you putting them on too quickly. If you want some rain pants that are more lightweight and definitely more durable, I'd recommend that you check out the Rab rain pants. They have a bunch of different options, but almost all of them are going to be guaranteed to be very waterproof, very lightweight, and very durable. Something else that's super important that a lot of people forget are bag lines. Liners. These liners are going to go inside of your backpack, at least most of them are, and they're going to keep all the contents of your backpack dry even if it gets rained on. A lot of backpacks, even the ones that claim that they're fully waterproof, actually aren't. And so if you'd like something that's just going to keep everything inside dry no matter what it is, just go ahead and buy some bag liners. A lot of times I even overdo it. I already have a dry bag by Sea to Summit that I put all my sleeping bag and my clothes into and then put that in my backpack, and then I also will use a bag liner just to like double do everything. Now the cheapest and most affordable bag liner that you can get out there is going to be a trash bag. This is actually what I use every single time. Any trash bag will do. You just have a trash bag and you grab any of the stuff that you don't want to get wet and you shove it in that trash bag and you shove that whole trash bag inside of your bag. Now a word to the wise, make sure you get an unscented trash bag because there have been many times that I've accidentally purchased a lavender trash bag or something like that. And then when you pull all your stuff out along the trail, you like attract all the bees and stuff. Well, that last part wasn't true, but I just don't like to pull all my stuff out and my fellow guys are like, is that lavender, man? <laughs> okay. <laughs> there are some other versions that you can find on Amazon. There are some for about $10 or around there. Those are just the cheap off-brand bag liners, basically glorified trash bags anyways. Now, if you really desire to, and you just like to have that brand name on everything that you own, you can go over to Osprey and they also have some great bag liners. Although in my opinion, they are overpriced and unnecessary because a trash bag does just as good. Something else that's super handy to have, especially in areas where it's kind of cold and wet or just more condensation prone in general, is a double walled tent. What this double walled tent's gonna do is actually when the condensation forms, it's all gonna form on the outside layer of that tent. This means that when you accidentally roll against that wall in the middle of the night, you're not getting your face drenched or something. And something that's actually really cool is that some of them will allow you to set up the rain fly first. What this means is that if you're caught on trail in the middle of a big rainstorm, you can quickly rush over, set up the rain fly first, and then set up the tent underneath the rain fly. This is gonna keep most of your tent dry as is. One of the most popular double walled tents for backpackers on the market right now is the Big Agnes Copper Spur ULHB. It's definitely pricey, but it is totally worth the money. It weighs like nothing, and it's going to last through a thunderstorm with like 70 mile per hour winds. This tent is made out of 1200 millimeter waterproof material. 
This leads into another very important aspect of camping in the rain, which is knowing how waterproofness of a tent actually works. How it's measured is basically they take millimeters of water and they place it over this material. And once there's enough water over top of the material for like three drops of water to soak through the material, that's where they draw the line and that's where the measurement comes from. This range is usually from somewhere from 1,000 millimeters to 10,000 millimeters of waterproofness. Having a good tent when you go out is going to keep you warm and dry at night. And actually another way to stay really warm at night is by knowing what sleeping pad you have. Hint, a video I did in the past. You should go check it out. Anyways, these are all tips on how to stay dry and not drown while you're out there. But that's not all that there is to camping. Another thing that you're probably going to have to do when it's rainy outside is kill time. One of the most simple ways to do this is by bringing cards. Bringing playing cards are going to be a great thing to do. They take up little space, they add very little weight, and they're great at killing time if you do have a buddy. Or if you don't, I guess there's always solitaire. Also, another tip that I have for you is when you do decide to cook that day, be careful of where you do it. I know you're going to want to stay dry and so you're going to be trying to cook underneath your vestibule, but staying dry is not nearly as important as not dying. Make sure that you're very careful careful if you're underneath your vestibule. Make sure that you have the heat turned way down on that gas stove so that you don't risk any fire. And for obvious reasons, no other fires outside of this gas stove, no bonfires or something underneath there. The last tip that I have for you today regarding how to camp in the rain actually has to do with where you camp in the rain. If there's any chance at all that it's going to flash flood or there's just going to be heavy rain, you need to be watching where you're putting your actual campsite. Is it prone to flood? Where does the water run when the rain starts? Keep an eye on this so that way you're not rudely awakened some night by some raging river through your tent. The bottom line is that every backpacker wishes the weather was perfect every single time they went out. That's just not going to happen. But I don't want for some bad weather to be the reason that you quit or even stop. Unless the weather is going to be actually super serious to where you're putting yourself or others at risk, a lot of times the weather conditions can be solved simply by just having the right gear and planning for it ahead of time. Anyways, I hope that these tips and tricks that have helped me in the past are going to help you in the future, even if there's a little bit of minor rain in this coming spring.